search for the missing jet continues. The aircraft is believed to have crashed into the sea off the coast of Ireland. On board the plane were Charles Frere, chairman and chief executive of Frere Holdings, Avril Rolfe, managing director of Relton Marine, a Frere subsidiary, and three crew. Ships of the Royal Navy on exercise near the suspected crash zone have been sent to join in the search. So far, no wreckage has been sighted. Reports that a second aircraft was involved in the incident remain unconfirmed. Present position, five zero degrees north, one to two degrees west. Initial uh, sector covered and nothing found. Uh, rescue 193, over. Rescue 193, Plymouth Rescue, right around. Keep me advised of developments. Thank you. Nothing. Mr. Urquhart, can you give us a statement on your reaction to the accident? Well, naturally, this comes as quite a shock to us, but we are following the air and sea searches carefully, and until I hear anything to the contrary, I remain hopeful. Without Mr. Frere in control, is the company trading as normal? Of course. Can you comment on the rapid drop in share prices in Frere Holdings since the accident? Well, it's understandable in the circumstances, but unless people are panicked by unnecessary selling, I'm sure that the share prices will soon stabilise. Mr. 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 Urquhart, is it true that Mr. Frere has I think they'd have picked up a distress signal. Something. Anything. Jack, if the aircraft beacon wasn't activated, they're going to have to start the search from the last known position. Now, with tides, currents, drift, it is going to take time. That's right, Jack. Why don't you get yourself home? You're not doing yourself any good hanging around here. Tom and I'll keep an eye on the telephones. We'll let you know the minute there's any news. Look, Jack, whatever's happened, Avril wouldn't want to see you looking like this. I am not moving until I know what's happened. OK, Stephanie, throw your shoulders back and lift your head up, throw your hair. That's good, that's good. Good, OK, good. Uh, nothing. Yes, well, no matter how it is for them, we've still got a sales brochure to get out and a business to run. Yep. So cheer up, eh? Will you require her for the travelling shots, or can I release her? Oh, what a good idea. Had a bit of glamour. Let's book her for another hour. What for, Ken? A sales brochure or a girly magazine? Whatever happened between your mother and Charles, Abby, happened before we were married. And no matter what, I'll always consider you as my daughter. And nothing will ever change that. You do believe me, don't you? Does your mother know that you're back? I asked Leo to phone and break the news. Your front line of defence. Something like that. Well, you know, Mother, she overreacts. Oh, I think you'll find that she's changed. Oh? Mm, she's become quite a career woman. She's running one of Jan Howard's boutiques. It's just what she needed. She's more content now than she's ever been. Who's looking after William? Orin's parents. And Orin? How's he? Fine. Emma Neeson. It's been a long time. Only a matter of months ago, Sir Edward Frere's Nielsen Group went into partnership with Frere Holdings on a business park development here in the South. At a press conference then, Sir Edward had announced his hope that the venture would be the first of several others to come. Perhaps at this moment, Sir Edward Frere is reflecting on the tragic irony of that announcement as he awaits news of his son. This is Andrew Chater at Highfield Manor for Southern News. Practically writing Charles a picture Perhaps if you released a formal statement, then they would leave. What would I tell them? Every morbid detail of how I would feel if I survived my son? Oh, I'm sorry. You don't have to apologize. I do. Especially to Charles. I noticed Seymour told me you were working with Tom Howard. I couldn't quite believe it. Why well, didn't notice anything to me about you being involved? In the America's Cup project. You know what I mean. I asked Otis not to say anything. 
I wanted to break the news personally. Otherwise, it would have only complicated matters. I hear your relationship with Tom Howard isn't strictly business. So I thought you might want to tell Tom about us. Doors fully open, boss. Bring an Andy into the doorway. Got him in the doorway, all this gear on, fins on, deal with lucky Tom. Ready to dispatch the diver. Dispatch the diver. Diver gone. Happy, happy swimming in and steady. Good position. Okay, Andy's making a cross towards the raft. Okay, bring the winch inboard. Okay, he's up and over, going into the raft. Highfield Manor? Yes, of course. What's this? Hmm? Oh, a uh, mate of mine's a dealer. He sent it. It's nothing compared to how ours is going to turn out. Any calls? Just uh, Wilkinson. He's going to be a little late for the demonstration. How late? Said he should be here by two. Well, I won't. I've got a lunch appointment. You and Leo will have to deal with it. Have you finished his quote? Almost. How's it looking? 350,000 less 5% discount. Ah, uh, forget the 5%. Offer him two and a half. Why? He'll accept it, that's why. And if he doesn't? Well, of course he will. Where else is he going to get 30 boats by the end of the month? Well, Relton, for a start. Wilkinson won't want to do business with Relton. After that accident, uh, market confidence in Freya Holdings is a little bit shaky. I don't want to cash in on other people's suffering, Ken. I'm not cashing in, Sarah. I didn't ask for Freya and Avril Rolf to be on that aeroplane. The accident happened, and I'm very sorry for them, but life has to go on. Yes, that's easy for you to say. You don't know how it feels to lose someone. I should. You've been telling me for months. Oh, I'm sorry. I do understand about Mark. I know how you must feel. Do you? up Avril and three others off the Irish coast a short while ago. Uh, is she all right? She's unconscious. What about Charles Freer? Jack, hmm? where are you off to? Well, I'm going over there. Now, there's a car on its way to collect you. Jan and Sir Edward are flying out there straight away. Too happy. How long are you back for, darling? I'm not sure. What happened? Oh, and I haven't been getting on. In what way? <clears throat> Everywhere. He seems so nice. Oh, look at us. We're all very nice, but we've certainly had our problems, haven't we? The difficulties, perhaps, but nothing too serious. Let's drop the pretense, Mother. Pretense? Polly. She knows about Charles. I don't know what to say, Abby. No, you don't have to say anything. I know it must be very difficult for you to accept what happened, but please try to understand. Don't get upset. I wanted to tell you. Believe me. Mother, listen. I do understand. I never could before, but now... 
I just want you to be honest with me. Otherwise, we'll never establish any kind of relationship. I want to. And I'm sure you can. I'm sure we all can. If we all make an effort while Abby's at home. Oh, it won't be as simple as that, I'm afraid. Damn. All alone, then, Mr. Aaron? Yeah, all alone. Jack get off all right, did he? Should be leaving about now. Look, well, Mr. Aaron, it's dinner time. Me and the lads will be going for a pint. Why don't you come and join us? No, I won't, thanks, Bill. It's all right. I'm going to take the barracuda out. See what needs sorting before this trial for the America's Cup team. I'll, uh, I'll let you know if anything needs doing. Some people have arrived for the demonstration. Is the proposal ready yet? Of course. You uh, all right, Sarah? Shouldn't I be? Seem a bit down, that's all. What's wrong? Ken Masters is what's wrong. He's not after one of these, is he? Today, tomorrow the world. Oh, come on, Leo. Don't tell me you haven't noticed the change since the company's gone public. Ken's probably just on a high. There's nothing to worry about. No. You know him. He's got a taste of success and is hungry for more. And he'll use you, me, anyone to get it. Just wait and see. Thank heaven you're back. It's the lads. What's the trouble? When we were down at the pub, a couple of them were got at by some reporters. Got at? Inside story on Miss Rolfe, they wanted. And? Well, I got them out of there as soon as I could, but they're still a bit unsettled, like. Did they say anything? Nothing to speak of yet, but I think you ought to have a word. I I've had one myself, but, well, there's still too much chat going on and not enough work. I'll be right with you. Excuse me, sir. All right. Right, everybody, just stop work for a minute. Let's have it nice and quiet now. Mr. Howard wants to say a few words. Thanks, Bill. I think you all know by now that Avril Rolfe was rescued this morning. But she's not out of danger yet. And so Jack has flown out to be near her. Now, the next 24 hours are not going to be easy for either of them. Now, I understand there have been a couple of reporters sniffing around for a story. I think we should ask ourselves, regardless of what happened, whatever the outcome of the situation, how Jack would feel to see rumour and half-truth splashed across the morning papers. Right, so I'd be grateful to you if you wouldn't speculate to the press in any way whatsoever. OK? Fair enough. All right. I'll let you know the minute there's any real news. Thanks. Cheers. Cheers. All right, guys. Back to work, eh? OK. Thank you. Tom, I've arranged for us to meet Paul Sumner tomorrow morning. Paul o Sumner? Otis Seymour's colleague. The consortium representative, the America's Club. Oh, yes, of course. Sorry. Don't be. You've obviously got more important things on your mind. How was Jack before he left? Torn apart. He must be. And Sir Edward. And you? You and Avril? She meant a great deal to me, Ella. Sir Edward. Dr. O'Rourke. This is Mrs. Howard. Mrs. Howard. Mr. Rolfe. Uh, Mr. Rolfe. How do you do? What's the current situation, Doctor? 
Your son, Sir Edward, and your daughter, Mr. Rolfe, are receiving the best possible attention. They were in the life raft for some time and suffered extreme exposure. I'm afraid we lost the pilot shortly after they were rescued. Your son's a very fit man, Sir Edward, and his chances are good. I'm afraid your daughter, Mr. Rolfe, suffered head injuries. She's now in intensive care. Her condition is critical. Uh, well, uh, can I see her? As soon as we've completed further tests, but only for a few minutes. Tell Jack I asked after him. And let me know immediately there's more news. All right, darling. Thank you. Goodbye. Well? Charles Fair must have someone watching over him. How is he? Extremely lucky. The doctors want to carry out a few routine tests, but apparently he's fine. And Avril? It's touch and go, Leo. She's on the critical list. Well, I better telephone your father. Jan wants me to let him know. Tell him I'll be able to crew on Barracuda's trial. All right. Better go. I'm meeting Abby. Leo, I'm sure you're delighted to see Abby back. And I know she's a sweet girl and all that, but... You've got enough on your mind with Jack Rolfe without worrying about me. That's better. I'm sure everything will turn out all right. I hope so, Leo. thinking about Charles, how I'd failed him. I was never much use as a father, Jan. Neglected him while he was growing up, and started making his own way in the business world. And now? He considers me a rival, really, rather than my son. And I can't get through to him, Jan. I've tried. Charles refuses to have anything to do with me. Ever since his mother died, he had this chip in his shoulder, this grudge. So he was working out some kind of revenge. Revenge? For what? For the way I treated his mother. Or at least the way Charles thinks that I did. He's convinced that I used Sophie. That I only married her as a social stepping stone to advance my career. As it happens, when I succeeded in business, the marriage ended in failure. Charles always felt that I was to blame. But you were both happy at one time, weren't you? I remember you telling me. Till Charles was born. After that, it was never really the same. Why not? I was always away building the business. Sophie was left with Charles. Perhaps in the process I did neglect them both, I don't know. Anyway, somewhere along the way, Sophie managed to persuade Charles that I did, and that I failed her just as much as I did him. Sophie died, a bitter woman, Jan. But she certainly left her mark on Charles. Sir Edward. I've uh, advised Mr. Freya that you're waiting to see him, but... Uh, Go on. I'm afraid he's refusing to see you. I'm sorry, there's nothing I can do. I suggest that you try, Doctor. I've come here to see him. Sir Edward, your son is my patient. What he needs now is rest, and above all, an absence of further stress. What is that supposed to mean? I believe your visiting your son would be upsetting. Probably for both of you. Oh, don't be stupid, Doctor. Edward, please. Sir Edward, I, I don't know what the situation is between you and your son, but frankly, my hospital is not the place for it. You are not to see your son unless he wishes it. Do I make myself clear? 
I was sure she'd start within seconds of me setting foot in the house, but she didn't. She's changed. Maybe it's you who's changed, Abby, not your mother. She has too. She actually seemed to care. Before you were never too sure, you know what I mean? Sounds how I was with Amanda. Now there's somebody who did change, constantly, like the weather. One minute everything was clear, next a raging storm. You seem to have survived. How about you? Well, Dorian. I just need some time. See how things turn out. Well, however they turn out, welcome back. I missed you. I missed you too. I thought about you all the time. Come on. Better drop you back at the hotel. Well, now's as good a time as any, I suppose, to tell you I've checked out of the hotel. I'm staying at Highfield Manor. Highfield Manor? Why? So Edward Freer arranged my trip. A couple of weeks ago, I had a phone call from one of his American representatives. Eventually we met, and he said Sir Edward Freer was keen to meet me, to discuss something of mutual concern. What? No, who? Charles Freer. William. Charles Freer? He's my real father. Will he be available for Sumner's visit tomorrow? I've already arranged it. I thought you could do with some moral support. From what I hear, I'll need it. Barracuda will see you through. You reckon? I'm convinced of it. Supposing he's not impressed? It's his loss. Without you on the design team, his consortium won't even come close. There are other designers. They haven't designed Barracuda. No. See you. Thank God you're all right. Would it have made any difference if I wasn't? I think you know the answer to that, Charles. We may have had our problems, but you're my son. And I care. Is there anything you want or need? How's Avril? She's being monitored 24 hours a day by the hospital staff. She's in the best possible hands. Has there been any change in her condition? Not yet. But I'll keep you advised. You're staying? I was planning to. Unless you'd prefer that I leave? As far as I'm concerned, you left years ago. Now, if you don't mind, I'm very tired. Very well, Charles. Absolutely fine. We had a most interesting chat. Where's Joan gone? Uh, I don't know. Oh, she's gone out to try and uh, get some sandwiches. Right. Any change in your daughter? Highfield Manor? Oh, Emerson? Uh, yes, he's fine, thank you. Uh, you know that picture hanging over the fireplace in the dining room? I want you to arrange to have it taken down and sent over to my son's house. Oh, yes, immediately. And uh, has Mrs. Hudson arrived yet?
take care of you, madam. If you'd like to make yourself comfortable, I will attend to your luggage. All right, thank you. It's quite a place. Yeah, that's for sure. I wonder who that is. It's probably some distant relative. Lady Sophie Freer, Sir Edward's first wife. Is your mother going to be the second? I don't know. I thought you said Sir Edward proposed. He did. My mother asked for time to think about it. Sir Edward's not the type to take no for an answer. I hope I've done the right thing coming to stay with him. Relax. I'm sure you'll both get along fine. Edward, you can't leave it like this with Charles. That makes no difference. At least we can go home now. Well, look, let me talk to him. There's really no need. I'll change. You know, I had a feeling she shouldn't have left. I told her, but she wouldn't listen to me. Jack, don't make it more difficult for yourself. Avril wouldn't want that, would she? No. No, I suppose not, no. If there's anything you need, anything at all, you will call, won't you? Thanks. I'll be fine. Keep us in touch, eh? Yes, I'll phone you if there's any news. How long do you think Sumner's visit would take? You want to put Barracuda through her paces? Perhaps take a look at spring? So probably most of the morning. Is she all he's made out to be? He's arrogant, abrasive at times, but he knows his stuff. Yes, he must do after his performance in the fast net and the Admiral's Cup. He's one of the best helmsmen around. He also happens to be an ex of mine. We went out together for a few months. It wasn't serious, not on my part. But I think Paul would have liked it to have been. I've been waiting for the right moment to tell you, and, uh, well, I just thought you should know. Does he know about us? He knows we've been seeing each other. That should make things interesting tomorrow, then, shouldn't it? Don't worry. He'll be checking you out thoroughly as a designer, not a rival. You have to go, Gerald. Yes, I have to bring Charles up to date with the business. Well, how long will he be away? Oh, only a few days. What about Abby? Well, I should be able to spend some time with her before she goes back to America. Yes, if Sir Edward doesn't try and keep you apart. Oh, why would he? Well, it wouldn't surprise me. It's the way he operates. Look, darling, just because he arranged for her to go to Highfield Manor doesn't mean to say he's going to bolt the door. That's the whole point, Gerald. Why did he arrange it? Uh, he obviously found out her connection with Charles. No, there's more to it. Abby would have said. Gerald. You do realise it won't be long now before everyone else guesses. You've got nothing to be ashamed of. We did what we felt was right, not only for ourselves, but for Abby. And we're not going to apologise to anyone. I'm very grateful for you being here. I'm sorry Charles reacted that way. <laughs> so am I. It's hardly surprising. He was always rather vindictive as a child. A trait he inherited from his mother, I hasten to add. You're not wearing your ring? No. Why? Well, I didn't think I should until I'd made a decision and... I haven't had time to think yet. Well, I'm not pressing you, you understand? Well, there's no reason why you shouldn't wear it. It's yours, whatever your decision. Only, don't keep me in suspense for too long, will you? Hello, it's me. In here, Leo. There's a postcard for you from Anna. Castile. Thought she'd gone to see a family in Hong Kong. 
Seems as though our Anna has a bit of the wanderlust. What's that word? Inspiration. She's looking for inspiration. <laughs> Have some hot chocolate. Uh, no thanks, Gran. I think I'd better get straight off to bed. Early start tomorrow with a test on Barracuda. How is Abby? Fine. Yeah, fine. What happened? Nothing, that's just it. I expected it to be all hearts and flowers. And instead you found a grown woman, with a husband and child, living a life of her own in America. Something like that. I thought she'd come home to be with me. In fact, she's trying to work out whether or not she wants to stay with Orin. I'm not even in the picture at all, except as a friend. Reliable old Leo. Well, don't let anything ever change that. Mr. Rolf, they said I might find you here. I just want to tell you how very sorry I am for what's happened. So am I. I'll make sure Avril gets the best medical attention there is. You've never really approved of our relationship, have you? Not since you hurt her in the way you did. No. I never intended to hurt her. <laughs> she did a damn good job. Look, I do understand how you must be feeling. How can you possibly understand? I love your daughter, Mr. Rolfe, very deeply. All I want is her happiness. I held that girl in my arms when she was one hour old. Watched her grow into a woman. So don't tell me anything about loving my daughter, Mr. Frey. yesterday, but you're away. I was in Ireland with Edward. Such a tragedy. Well, what do you think of the motor? It's very nice. Leo tells me Abby's staying at Highfield Manor. That's right. You know? Yes. Yes, well, it's uh, none of my business now. No, Kate said you'll be back today, so I thought I'd stop by on my way to the office. Well, what do you want to talk to me about? I'm rather busy at the moment. Well, then why don't I pick you up about half past twelve and we can discuss it over lunch? Uh, no, I've made other arrangements. Discuss what? Another powerboat commission for the Mermaid Yard. My share in the boutique. Us. There's nothing to discuss about us, Ken. Not as long as you're wearing that. You haven't given Sir Edward your answer? No, not yet. Good. You don't want to rush into something you might one day come to regret. You know, Jan, I can't really see you as Lady Freya. Not unless you're just after the title, of course. Goodbye, Ken. Keep in touch. Let me know what you eventually decide. So how is she? Still on the critical list. But at least the condition stabilized overnight. Jack must be shattered. And you, Dad? Leo, you've got enough on your plate without worrying about me. Why? Because of Parker? No, Abby. Quite close to her, aren't you? 
I'm not going to make the same mistake twice, if that's no, what you mean. Leo, people make the same mistake over and over. I know I did. Sir, that doesn't mean to say I will. Well, as long as you're aware of it. Now, what about Parker? Uh, he wants to meet again to discuss this wedding gift he deposited into Amanda's account. Which was it? £30,000. And he's accusing you of spending it? <laughs> I didn't know anything about it. Parker's not the type to be cross, Leo. Be careful when you meet him until you find out exactly what he's got on his mind. OK. <laughs> Delighted to meet you at last. I'll get Emerson to fix some breakfast. I know, just some coffee will do. You sure? Yes. yes. Thank you. Apologies for not being here personally to greet you when you arrived. That's all right. Thanks. How was your flight? How was yours? Oh, fine. Thankfully, your father seems to be recovering. Does he know that I'm staying here? No, not yet. I gather you broke the news to Polly and Gerald. Yes. How were they? Surprised. Well, I must meet them. Explain to them why I arranged this visit of yours. Why did you arrange it? You're a freer, Emmy. The granddaughter I never knew I had. At least, till a few weeks ago. I must say, it came as a bit of a shock. Now, tell me about this problem you're having with your husband. Uh, Orin, isn't it? Well, there isn't really very much to tell. You didn't arrange the visit just because of that, or did you? <laughs> now I see the resemblance. You're exactly like your father. You'd prefer I came right to the point? Please. Well, ever since I discovered that I had a granddaughter, I've been keen to meet you, Abby. I'm also keen to help you in any way that I can to resolve this situation with your son. What situation? I gather the Hudsons are very close to William. Too close. And if your separation from Orin became permanent, they wouldn't just sit back and allow him to hand over custody. Never. I think we can persuade the Hudsons to adopt a more reasonable view. The Hudsons aren't the type of family to be easily persuaded. And the Freers are not the type of family to let something like that stand in their way, my dear. With a lifting keel, shallow draft and smaller rig, the effect of light displacement is maximized. Well, what exactly is Barracuda's displacement? 12,000 pounds. Quite an achievement, isn't it? You certainly seem impressed. With Barracuda or just Tom? Don't start, Paul, please. Morning. Hello, Emma. Tom Howard Paul Sumner. Pleased to meet you. How do you do? My son, Leo. Hi. Hi. Bill Sears, the yard foreman. All set, Mr. Howard. Right. Let's get down the way, shall we? I've heard a lot about the barricade, Tom. I'm anxious to see what you can really do. Oh, good morning. Yeah, sorry I'm a bit late. Stopped off at a client's. Any calls? Oh, just McIntyre, about his shipment. Oh, when's it due to arrive? Tomorrow. Ah, good. Oh, yeah. Right, we'd better get on with it. We've got a lot to get through, haven't we? Right. What do you want to discuss first? The business plan or the shareholders' report? Well, I think we ought to discuss the shareholders' report. Unless they're content, there won't be a business plan, will there? Uh, what happened to the reference I made about manufacturing in item two? Oh, I amended it. Why? Well, we never agreed to get into manufacturing. Well, not officially, no. No, so I thought before you made any reference to it in your report, you should discuss it with me. I was intending to. Well, I hope so, Ken. I mean, otherwise I'm hardly going to build Mark's business the way he would have wanted unless I have my say. It's not Mark's business anymore, Sarah. It's not yours either. Since we've gone public, you're still accountable to me, just as much as any of the shareholders. Perhaps even more. And what's that supposed to mean? It means... Don't try and shut me out, Ken. I'm not shutting you out, Sarah. No? McIntyre passed Ocean Village on his way to the office this morning and saw you with your client. Ah, yes, I was just discussing a potential follow-up to the powerboat with Jan, that's all. It's all right, you don't have to convince me. It's Sir Edward Freer. 
Otherwise, he could make life difficult. What about his bridging loan? No, not only his bridging loan, Ken. If Sir Edward ever lobbied Stevens again or any of the shareholders, you could find yourself in trouble. Particularly if he ever lobbied me. Now, uh, I'm sure that would never happen. Unless, of course, you were ever thinking of getting back together again with Jan. Well, it's all in the past, Sarah. You know that. Oh, I do, Ken. You just better make sure you do, too. Tremont, Tremont. That's it. Check away. Hold it. Ready, bud. Helm's a leap. Here's the cash flow projections for the marina development and the business park leasing returns. Yes, well, that all seems to be in order. Thank you, Gerald. Order? Charles. The marina development won't achieve target next quarter and the business park's leasing is down 12.5%. You handle it. Take whatever course of action you think necessary. You don't seem very concerned. Is it really that important? Well, that depends on how you want your profit and loss statement to read. If I hadn't been picked up out of the sea, it wouldn't matter how I wanted it to read, would it? No. Do you know members of my crew died out there? And right now, Avril is in intensive care. How do I assess that kind of profit and loss? Yes, I take your point. But that's hardly an adequate explanation for the shareholders. Oh, shareholders. Especially now. The end of trading yesterday, if share prices were down, again. And I would strongly recommend that you complete your agreement with Sarah Zauer as soon as possible. You handle Sarah Zauer, Gerald. Right now, all that concerns me is Avril. There's another matter I want to discuss with you besides business. It concerns us both and Abby. Abby? She's back in England. Is she all right? Yes, she's fine. But she's staying at Highfield Manor. Apparently, your father arranged the trip. Impressive design, Tom. You'll be a welcome addition to the team. I would have Seymour thought so too, but I still haven't received a formal offer. You will, after we've completed the necessary formalities. Such as? You appreciate I have to maintain absolute confidentiality. Oh, yes, of course. Recruiting a team to build for the America's Cup is a long, arduous process, Tom. But I would hope to arrange a meeting with the consortium quite soon. I take it you're still not in a position to name any of them? Not yet. Morning, Periclus. Yes, speaking. Yes. When? Uh, yes, yes. Twelve o'clock will be fine. Thank you. Goodbye. Is that Jack? No. A detective sergeant, Morrissey. Who else besides you and Polly knew I was planning to launch Anna's designs for the European market? Why, darling? Someone's trying to stop me. Stop you? What on earth are you talking about? There was a break-in late last night at the design house. All of Anna's original templates have been stolen. Mr. Rolf, I'm afraid your daughter's condition has deteriorated. There's evidence of cerebral edema, a swelling of the brain. We're taking her for a scan now to determine if there is a clot. 
If so, we'll have to operate immediately and try to remove it. And if you can't? You'll have to prepare yourself for the worst. Unless the edema subsides, it's doubtful if your daughter will survive. I'm very sorry.